Well, three years after Annabelle came out, and after in the year after we got the second Conjuring flick, we got a prequel to that Annabelle movie. Let's talk about Annabelle creation right now. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 2017 supernatural horror flick Annabelle Creation, released by Warner Bros. for New Line Cinema. Film was directed by David F. Sandberg, who would later direct Shazam for the studio, ran by Gary Doberman, and produced by Pierce Safran and James Wan. This is a prequel to the 2014 movie of Annabelle and the fourth overall installment in the Conjuring Universe franchise. So I'm not going to have you click on any cards or anything since this is a prequel to the first Annabelle. The film stars Stephanie Sigmund. Talitha Bateman, Anthony LaPaglia, and Miranda Otto. And it depicts the haunted Annabelle doll's origin. Mm hmm. Well, it was first announced a year after the, the first movie that a sequel would be in development, but it was later revealed that the film would be a prequel rather than a sequel. Oh yeah, there's something else I didn't get a chance to mention. Um, David David Sandberg also recently directed another um, horror flick, one I've never seen but heard of, Lights Out, which was recently done by Warner Brothers. Well, released by. Anyway, as much as its predecessor was, critics were more impressed with this one. As they know it as an improvement over the first one. Anyway, our story starts out with a doll maker named Samuel Mullins and his wife Esther, who grieve for the loss of their seven year old daughter Annabelle, nicknamed B, who dies when she accidentally steps in front of a car. Twelve years later, the Mullins open their home to provide shelter for Sister Charlotte and six girls left homeless. By the closing of their orphanage, despite having been warned to avoid Bee's locked bedroom, Janice, a young orphan disabled by polio, discovers a note saying, Find me, and sneaks into the room, which has mysteriously become unlocked. She finds a key for Bee's closet and opens it, where she sees an eerie porcelain doll. This unwittingly releases a powerful demon that begins to terrorize the girls. One night, the demon taking Bee's form appears to Janice, saying that it wants her soul. Although she attempts to get away using a stair lift, the demon recalls the stair lift and hurls her violently down to the ground floor, leaving her severely injured and confined to a wheelchair. Janice's best friend Linda is tormented by the demon. One morning, the demon posing as Sister Charlotte wheels Janice into the old barn, where, in the form of B, it attacks and possesses her after throwing a black bile directly into Janice's mouth. Eeh. Linda notices changes in Janice's behavior and tells Samuel that Janice snuck into B's room and found the doll. Janice, who can now walk, transforms into the demon and brutally kills Samuel, who follows her while holding a crucifix forcing him to drop it. Outside, Sister Charlotte heard his screams as she checked on him. She is horrified to find him lying down dead. Linda takes Janice's doll and throws it into the well. A strange noise comes from the well, and she is almost dragged into it. But Sister Charlotte saves her. Alarmed, Sister Charlotte speaks with the disfigured Esther, who is confined to our bedroom. Esther explains that after Bee's death, they prayed to whatever entity would grant their wish to see their daughter again. An unknown entity answered their prayer and through not her excuse me, I misread that. And though they briefly saw Bee's spirit, the entity convinced them to transfer its essence into one of Samuel's crafted dolls. They happily agreed, but soon realized 
They had attracted a demon looking for a human host. One night, Esther saw Beast spirit transforming into the demon, which then gouged out her eye. Yikes. Enlisting the help of priest, bless the house, they locked the doll in Beast's closet. Esther and Samuel opened their house as a shelter to repent for their actions. But Esther now regrets it since this has provided an opportunity for the demon to look for a human host. Alright, now for the ending. You know the procedure, like always. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below to avoid the ending spoilers. If you've seen the movie already, please continue on after the five seconds. Thank you. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. The demon murders Esther and attacks Sister Charlotte. The orphans leave the house, but Linda is trapped and hides in B's room as the possessed Janice tries to stab her. Sister Charlotte locks Janice and the doll inside the closet. The next day, police arrive to search the house and find only the doll, which they remove as evidence. Sister Charlotte, Linda, and the orphans are escorted away by officers, while Janice escapes through a hole in the closet wall and relocates to an orphanage in Santa Monica. Still possessed, she becomes reclusive and calls herself Annabelle. The Higgins family soon adopt her. And 12 years later, a grown-up Annabelle joins a satanic cult and, along with her boyfriend, murders her adoptive parents, which catches the attention of the next-door neighbors. The forms. End of story. So what do I think of Annabelle creation? Well, I'm going to say this was an improvement. It was actually um, well, one of the first films in the Conjuring universe I ever saw. Well, even though I had seen this just right, I think it was before after I saw the, the next one, Annabelle Comes Home. But anyway, I was impressed. With our um, characters here. Yeah, because uh, at the end, you actually get to see what we saw in early on in the beginning of the first sample. Now, at the ending, however, we um, we did get to see a post credit scene which would actually lead into the next installment of The Conjuring Universe, and of course, that being The Nun, which that happens to be, well, one of the only two films in the Conjuring universe I have yet to see, the other being The Cars of La Llorona. Anyway, this film got better response than its predecessor. I gotta give credit to the cast. Now, we have Stephanie Sigmund playing Sister Charlotte, who was very good. Anthony LaPaglia played Samuel. Mullins and Miranda all as Esther Mullins. They were all they were pretty good too. But I think the big thing was the kids, especially young Talitha or Talitha, I'm not sorry if I mispronounce this, Bateman as Janice. I must say very impressive. And Lulu Wilson as Linda. I gotta say she was good too. Um yeah, we got to see some, some, well, pretty good performances and what have you. Uh, so, anyway. Oh, wait a minute. Scratch that. Um, oh, I miss, I made a mistake. It wasn't possibly a lead-in for the night at the end at the, as the coda. Actually, it was um, the, the, um, the demon nun we saw in... The Conjuring 2, so, my mistake, I know The Nun came out, I think, the next year, so, my apologies. But the cast was pretty good, Benjamin Walfish's score for this was actually pretty good, too, uh, I must give them credit for that, uh, mm-hmm. Now... Anyway, everybody was happy with this and what have you, most of the critics were. I mean, I mean, 
it was wickedly terrifying, said one report, one person from the Hollywood Reporter, and well, lots of other things. Uh, but anyway, I must give the, the film its credit and why have you, I mean, I like the atmosphere and why have you, ha how long did some um, movie took place in, can't, well, I still don't know when, well, I mean, what year this movie took place in, but, well, anyway, I still thought it was awesome. And the story isn't too bad here. I mean, this was much more of a good improvement over the first movie because of its story. I mean, its its um, thrills were really spine-tingling. This didn't really scare me much at all. Mm -mm. So anyway, I think Annabelle Creation was a perfect prequel and what have you. So in the end, would I recommend Annabelle Creation? The answer is hell yeah. This is this is one film in the Conjuring universe you can't afford to turn down. If you weren't too impressed with them, the predecessor, which would come out, well, which would fall after the events of this one, then you'll love this movie a little more. You might have a little liking for the next one, but I doubt you would, though. I mean, Annabelle comes home with more mix, but I'll get to that when I review it. But anyway, if you've seen Annabelle Creation, let me tell, let me um, know what your thoughts are on the film in the comments section below. If you like this film, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a spoiler-free review of... I'm hoping I'm going to get Peacock to, well for this. That's right, I'm going to watch Halloween Kills on Peacock, even though it's coming to theaters, but I will be doing a review of that. Anyway, well, we'll hope for the best, right? So... Thanks for watching, and if you like this, you may want to consider checking out some of these other reviews. In the upper left-hand corner is the re-review I did for Child's Play 2, I did not so long ago. The upper right-hand corner is my review for The Conjuring 2, or Catch, or you can see my review for the film that came out before this, but follows the events after this film in Annabelle, in the bottom left-hand corner. In the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big V saying, see ya.